Okay, so we're studying hope, and we're talking about it from um, two different perspectives, as we talked about, uh, the, the worldly perspective, and I don't mean that in a negative way, because there's nothing wrong in inherently with saying, you know, I hope such and such happens. And then we're also going to be looking at it in a spiritual sense, which we understand to be true hope and eternal hope. And so we've looked at a little bit in the first lesson about that. Now, these lessons that I'm going through, these, these first six different presentations, are foundational in nature. And then uh, when I complete those, uh, Mark is going to be taking over, and he's going to uh, help us deepen our knowledge and understanding by looking at some case studies from Scripture. Uh, these will be some that uh, hopefully you're familiar with, but uh, maybe you'll have a, a deeper understanding with them. Now, real quick, just by a very quick review, last week we defined hope. Uh, the, the textbook definition, the dictionary definition is uh, desire accompanied by expectation. So I want something. And then I have this expectation that that desire or that want's going to be fulfilled. And we said if you don't have hope, that uh, you, you really have no view of the future. And that's an important concept that I'd like you to keep in mind as we go through this, because we're going to look at how that interacts as we go through this lesson this morning. Uh, we, we may find ourselves in a hopeless situation uh, for many reasons uh, related to what goes on in our life. You know, there, there just may be life events, um, illness, injury, that kind of thing, or relationships, or jobs. There's just many situations we find ourselves in where we think, well, there's just no hope about this. And some of these might in time play out to be, and I don't mean to downplay them so much, but sometimes when we view these in the grand scheme of life, we see that they're a little more trivial than the importance we placed on them initially. And yet some of them are incredibly important and, and must be dealt with. And so we look at those. But life situations, relationships, jobs, whatever. And again, I want to uh, emphasize one more thing, and then we'll, we'll move into the lesson itself. Y you probably have a good grasp of this, but you know people who don't. And I want to emphasize that again. Part of our mission, not only to worship and glorify God, but to reach out to others and help them. And, and so we, we are the vehicle through which our Lord communicates hope, one of the vehicles. Uh, he, he places the responsibility on us. And so we know people, and we can help people. So in this lesson, we're going to look at the stages of journey to hopefulness. We go from hopeless to hopeful. Now, this is foundational, but it's, this lesson is actually at the heart of uh, the whole series of lessons because we're going to be looking at the stages that we go through. And I've divided it into two ways. I'm taking a general view um, of the journey, so that it, it, looking at it from the idea that, well, it just applies to us in life in general, life situations. And then I want to shift gears and go into the spiritual view, because I think that's important as well. All right, let's, uh, let's move into that. First of all, I want to, I want to take a, a look at this diagram that I've got on the screen. It, it shows three stages that we go through. We go from uh, hope sparked, hope sensed, and then hope seen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break these out individually. Now, please understand, uh, I, I'm breaking them out so we can look at them, but there's a blending of these. Uh, there's a transition as we go through, and sometimes we're making great progress upward, and we may slip back a little bit, back and forth, but uh, it, it, it nevertheless is a, is a journey, a pathway, and so it's a model to help us understand about this. Uh, we can find ourselves in what seems to be a hopeless situation, again, for any number of reasons, and, and this model has an application in those situations, a general view. I'm struck, by the way, of how this applies, uh, has similarities between um, adult learning. 
Uh, my, my master's degree is in adult learning, and I can't help but look at things from a learning perspective so many times. And I'm, I'm, I'll refer back to that a little bit as we go. But let's talk about hope sparked. You ever been in a deep, dark night? I mean, a dark, dark night. <laughs> Overcast skies, there's no lights and all around you. And, and uh, just as morning starts to break, you see that little sliver of the sun coming over the horizon? That's what I mean. You're, you're surrounded with darkness of, man, I am in a situation. And then there's that little spark out there. And isn't it magical how it just zooms our attention to it? So that's the idea of hope sparked. In this stage, we see a glimmer of hope. We may not recognize it for what it is. Uh, we may not even believe what we're seeing out there. Uh, we, we may not have um, uh, comprehended that this is a glimmer of hope. We may later look back on it and say, ah, oh, that's where I saw it. Oh, I think of Luke chapter 15. Uh, our Lord gives that great parable of the, of the um, prodigal son. And, and remember as the young man has finally lost all, wasted all of his inheritance and he's in that pig pen uh, feeding the pigs and he's hungry and he would even have eaten their food. And remember what it says? And when he had... You know it. Come to his senses. To his senses. That's that spark. I, I, I see that. The, the man is in the deepest depression he's been in in his life, in this parable. And there's a spark there. He remembers going back in his memory to what's going on in his home and what it was like. And so when he had come to his senses, I just, I love that. All right, let's move on. <laughs> um, so we may have a clear picture of what we want to happen but uncertainty about, uncertainty about how to obtain it. That, that's the idea. All right, and, and so uh, a person in this stage, and I'm going to move away from this, but I've kept, how does that look up there? Okay, you, I can see it. <laughs> um, we're, we're at that bottom level, the idea of, of and, and when we get into the spiritual part of this, you're going to see why I drew this as a triangle like this. And I appreciate Mark. He's been a sounding board on a lot of these concepts for me. So I appreciate uh, his input on that. Uh, but a person in this stage desires the possibility of hope. I, I want it. I, I don't like being in a hopeless situation. I, I want hope. It's critical to our life. It's just a natural part of who we are. And so we want the possibility of it. But we continue to feel doubt. I want it, but I just don't see a way out of this. I just don't, can't see it. These are thoughts that are bouncing around in our minds sometimes. Uh, we lack confidence. We question whether we're making the right decision. Is what I'm doing going to result in what I want that I dare hope for? That, that's one of those things that applies in the human, or excuse me, adult learning situation. Many times adult learning is problem solution based. And I have a problem and I'm looking for a solution. And, and so I want to know, is, is the solution or solutions, plural, that I'm looking for, are they going to help resolve this situation? So I lack confidence. I just don't know. And, and I, I'm uncomfortable with things. But I'm willing to try. It, it, when we get desperate enough, we're willing to try almost anything. But even in our trying and our willingness to try, we, we just keep this sense of, of defeatism. I, I, I don't think this is going to work, but I got nothing else to do. I might as well give it a try. And, and so we see this. Uh, I, I, I just, I've got nothing else to try. I might as well give it a try. So that's hope sparked. Uh, that, that, we see that glimmer. It's out there. And again, we're going to look at that from a spiritual sense here in just a few minutes. All right, so then there's hope sensed. Hope sensed in this stage, there's still some lingering doubt, but we begin to see evidence of the changes in our situation. Again, going back to the idea of adult learning, well, I tried it, and it seems to have worked. So I'm going to continue in that direction. And that's the idea of hope sensed. And so the person in this stage has a growing sense of confidence. Not great confidence, but well, it worked. 
I'm willing to try to keep going. As opposed to, well, it didn't work. See, I told you it wouldn't work. A growing sense of confidence. It worked. I'm going to keep working at it. Uh, we recognize hope growing. We, motiv- we are motivated to continue. Uh, we, we were going in that direction, so I'm motivated now to continue because it is working. Um, there's evidence of change. Otherwise, we'd give up. Uh, there's some emerging confidence. Okay, then, hope seen. Now we see it. We have confidence in our efforts. What we tried, what we changed, whatever the intervention was, it worked. Whatever the situation is, it's either resolved or well on its way to being resolved. Uh, I, don't, I don't mean to communicate that things are going to happen immediately and everything's great, rosy, and neato, pichichino. It's just, it's going to take a little while, but I know that I'm going in the right direction. I see light at the end of the tunnel is the expression I think we use sometimes. And, and we focus on continuing to improve our life situation. And we grow in our sense of peace and calmness with the situation. I can handle this. We're going to get through this. And so hope is seen. And so we go from hopeless to where we have little or no care to hopeful. And we're full of care and concern. And we see it working. I I want to point out, too, that we we don't necessarily at, at this stage, we don't become singularly focused, but we do um focus on uh, or our, our focus narrows to where we're able to see instead of a grand view and not able to focus on anything our as we go our focus also narrows and we can see resolution all right let me move on i want to go from a uh, general view i'll use that expression i hate to, uh, no i don't hate i'm sorry I, I i don't necessarily want to uh, focus in so much saying this is a secular view because it is a view that we hold and we we know as christians there there's we grow to where there's not a dividing line between our life in general and our spiritual life we we understand they need to be one but not everybody sees that and we want to bring them from the secular view into the spiritual view and so i want to talk about the spiritual application of this and that's where i want to go uh, with all of this uh, it's important as our hope for resolutions to life situations um, i mean that's that's important resolving these life situations but it's also infinitely more important that we resolve we resolve our spiritual situation and that's why we just have to learn to look at everything from that perspective and this view that i'm going to present um, coincides very clearly with our spiritual growth and i'll explain that as we go all right let's move into it Again, I've drawn this as a, as a triangle, and I want to point out some things about it. I've got the idea of man, this is us, and there's a gulf between us and Christ. And the further apart we are from Christ, the more hopeless our situation. And if we are not in Christ, then we are hopeless. Yes, we may have a good life going on in this world, but we know that's terminal. Temporal is the idea. It's of this world. So the closer we are to Christ, the greater our hope. And that's what I'm trying to illustrate with this model. The other thing I want to note, and I said it last week, and I will say it forever. get back again here we are and here's Christ we are in the kingdom we need to express that people need to see that hope in us and 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 truly that that's part of why why I'm saying don't forget you're in the kingdom because sometimes when we're in this first level uh, and I'll touch on that we may not feel a strong sense of hope and joy in that early stage of our spiritual walk, and we need to remember that. 
And, and if we don't demonstrate it, how can we express it? I mean, how can we expect it out of others if we don't express it? So let me, let me move on. I'm sorry. Um, our spiritual journey to hope. I want to touch again on each one of the areas. Hope sparked. Uh, well, let, me, let me back up just a second. I'm sorry. Uh, there's three stages based on our understanding of our relationship with God. So that, that's, that's critical there. Stop pushing that button. Okay, so I got man and God, or, or Christ, we're, we're separated. I, I want to point this out. Christ is the constant. We're the one moving towards our Lord, and the more we move towards our Lord, the greater our hope. Now, our Lord does come to us. Oh, okay, I'm not going to touch on it. One of the case studies Mark is going to bring out. I hope he brings it out, is, is the man at the pool of Bethesda. And, and I won't go any further than that. But our Lord approached him. Our Lord came to us first, didn't he? While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And, and so that, that's part of the idea there. But our Lord is the constant. Uh, Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's a constant in our life. Um, Romans 8, 37 through 39. I love Romans 8. But uh, as it ends, he says, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So that's the constant in our life. We're the ones going up and down, backwards and forwards in every which way. And so we have that imagery. And oh, stop it. And as we, as we grow spiritually, we become more and more Christ-like. Doesn't happen in this life that we are completely Christ-like. But our goal is that when people see us, they see Christ. And so that's the idea of spiritual maturity. And so we go again, hope sparked, hope sensed, hope seen. I, I related it to hope sparked as I may be saved. I, I have some lingering doubts. Okay, let's get to that. So we draw closer to our Lord. We experience a greater awareness of our salvation. And so we go from, I think I'm saved to, I know I'm saved. And this is where I want to touch on. Um, yeah. So in this first stage of hope sparked, I, I may be saved. I think I am. I, no, not even. I think I am. I just, I may be, I, I'm not completely, I'm not completely grasping that situation or that understanding. And, and that's, that's why it's important to remember I am in the kingdom. And I'll grow to learn more and more what that means and what my responsibilities are in that. And so we're in a relationship with Christ, but we have doubts about our salvation for whatever reason. Our salvation for whatever reason. Uh, maybe it's the previous life we've lived. Maybe it's um, our uh, friends that we had and we still have that are casting doubt on us. And maybe it's even family, but for whatever the reason is, I have some doubts there. We desire and we recognize the possibility of salvation. I understand what salvation is and is out there. And I understand what I'm supposed to do and then behave and the changes in my view and my understanding. I understand all that. And so I've gone through that. I think about the rich young ruler that approached Jesus and said, I've done all these things for my youth. What else do I need to do? And so we have the desire and we recognize the possibility of salvation. We lack confidence. We question whether we've made the right decision. I always think when I think about making the right decision, I remember sitting on my bunk one morning, uh, second day of basic training, sitting on my bunk going, what was I thinking? <laughs> That's kind of the way it is. But again, you know, the excitement of responding to the gospel and being baptized and, and, and hearing that I now have my sins forgiven and all the joy of that. And, and then in the quiet moment, I go, did I make the right decision? Especially if somebody says, well, you know, you really didn't have to do that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that wasn't important. And then, you know, that's stuff anyway. Did I do the right thing? Somebody who tells me that might be somebody significant in my life. So we need to be careful about that and reinforce, you know, uh, uh, aftercare. After our initial birth into the kingdom, we need to be there for that person to help them. 
nurture them. So lack, we, lack, <clears throat> we lack confidence. We question whether we've made the right decision. We're concerned about not feeling. Brother, thank you. This is where I was going to go. Uh, your comment. Uh, we're concerned about not feeling the peace and joy and hope that others talk about and express. Man, I wish I could be like so-and-so. Why can't I, there must be something wrong with me that I have to make myself get to that church building or participate in that Bible class or whatever. What's wrong with me that I'm not looking to do that? And, and so, again, it's a growth process. We'll get there. But we feel frustrated because of these uh, continued influences in our previous life that seem to drive a wedge. So that's why we say, I may be saved. I'm just not sure. So we grow. But we're in the kingdom. All right? Hope sparked. Hope sensed. This is expressed as, I think I'm saved. I go from, well, I may be saved, to I think I'm saved. And I can say that because, again, my thought processes are changing. I'm internalizing things. I'm understanding things better. I'm beginning to feel the things that I'm supposed to. There's still some lingering doubt, but we begin to see evidence in our life. If we're staying with it, we begin to see our life change. But there's still some lingering doubt. But we are, we're experiencing a, a growing sense of confidence, an emerging confidence is there. And it's based, again, because our relationship with the Lord is growing. We begin to see the changes we need to make, and we begin to make those changes. And we begin to understand more about our Lord's teachings and putting those into our lives. And we begin to grow in our confidence. Some general characteristics, we have a growing sense of confidence and also a growing sense of faith. Uh, we transition, and I appreciate Mark <laughs> in our discussion again. Y'all going to love his part of the program. I, I just, I'm ready to sit down and let him take over. He's got some great things to say. But we go from an intellectual perspective on this to a spiritual understanding. Our spirit is growing. I said that wrong. The spirit is growing within us. Uh, maybe that's a better way to express it. Our Lord's spirit is there and it's growing in us. And so we go from an intellectual view to a spiritual view, uh, especially with our relationship with Christ. We recognize a closer relationship with Christ. And that generates even greater hope. Success builds on success. And so our hope grows, our faith grows, our relationship with the Lord grows, our relationship with each other grows. And we seek to continue to grow so the motivation to grow is there. Can it wane? Yes. And there's any number of reasons why our motivation and our faith wane, start to mellow and, and move down, I guess I should say. A significant part of that is we need to keep our focus on the Lord and keep drawing closer and closer to our Lord. And as we do, that desire, that motivation, that joy, that peace, that hope is going to grow as well. Hope seen. We have confidence in our salvation. And we express it as, I know I'm saved. And, and the, the great thing about this, that is a liberating perspective. I know I'm saved. And I don't mean that in a haughty way. I said last week, that, that, that's an humble perspective. And I mentioned that in here. But I know I'm saved. First of all, our Lord promised it, and he's faithful to his promises. I'm growing as he wants me to in my relationship with him. And so I know I'm saved. I understand I am and why and how that came about. And again, it's not something I did to earn it. That's not what Paul told us in Ephesians chapter 2. It's based on our Father's grace and faith. But faith is an active process. Faith requires something from us. Our Lord said, be doers. His brother James said, do it. Don't just say, I've got it. And part of that is our response to the Lord. And it's a physical response. 
but it's also very much a spiritual response. And, and, and so not just our acknowledgement, but our repentance and, and our following through with salvation by baptism, but not just by baptism, but it's all of that together. And we say, okay, that's the start. And so we grow and we grow until we can say, I know I'm saved. The liberating portion of that is, I don't have to worry about that. I can now get about my father's business. That part's taken care of. I'm in the kingdom. And because of that, I can be who, I can be who our Lord wants us to be. And, and that, that's, that's just a wonderful part. It's a liberating part. How sad it is to stay in the state of I think so, I may be so. That's kind of sad. You're you're missing out. It's great standing in the sunshine. It's not great standing in the shadow of doubt. And again, I don't mean that in a haughty or whatever way like that. it's, It's a gift that our Lord wants to give us. And so we can grow to that. And I say grow because we never fully reach it, but we're on the way. So it's an humble confidence in salvation. It's understanding grace and forgiveness. It's a total focus on Jesus. We grow to that focus, singular focus. That becomes our concern. And uh, the sense of peace and joy that comes with that. And the last point on that slide is we can't help but share it. We, we've... (laughs) We look for opportunities to share it. Hi, I'm Dave Layton. Let me tell you about my friend Jesus. I think about the the uh, demon-possessed man that Jesus healed. And after he was healed and he's sitting there talking to our Lord, he says, can I follow you? And our Lord said, no, go back home and tell your family and friends. And so he does. And then he goes out to the Decapolis, the ten cities, and he speaks... Let me tell you what Jesus did for me. And I love that because that's what we can do. That's where we start. I had this hope and joy. What are you so happy about? Oh, let me tell you about my friend Jesus. Oh, here we go. Another Jesus freak. Oh, let me tell you about my friend Jesus. Let me tell you who I used to be and where I am now. And I had that joy because of Jesus. And, and, and you were a little bashful about that and hesitant, but we can grow to that, staying close to our Lord. And so we have confidence in our salvation. I know I'm saved. Let me, let me go ahead and wrap up. Having hope, uh, it, it gives us a view of the future. We go from no view and no care to I have a future, and I am concerned about it and concerned about others as well. Uh, we feel uh, oh, uh, Psalm 23, verse 4. Uh, it's, it's, it's another hope-filled passage of so many. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. When I read that, it, uh, you know, we always think of uh, the shadow, of the, uh, the valley of the shadow of death as being physical death. But it can also be other things, the death of a relationship, the death of hope. And, and our Lord can be there and he comforts us. So as we continue our journey to hope, we travel from hope sparked, hope sense, and finally, hope seen. And uh, we're going to be going through uh, some other concepts in the coming weeks. Next week, we're going to talk about how God guarantees our hope. And that's a wonderful concept, knowing that God holds our hope secure. All right, thank you very, very much for your thoughts and expressions today and your attention most of all. Praise God in all things.